welcome to Empowerment Radio. My name is Dr. Friedman, and I'm so glad that you decided to join me. Empowerment Radio is about giving you the insights, tools, and solutions to address some of the most challenging aspects of our daily lives. So sit back, relax, and empower yourself. Welcome to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman. Well, we all want to be loved and we all want to love. But love is not necessarily associated for everyone with joy and fulfillment. And for many, in fact, it is more a topic that is associated with hurt and pain and frustration and maybe even shame. Now, what is your relationship to love? Are you in a loving relationship? Or are you still looking for some? Are you someone who is completely open and committed and also confident that you will find that love of your life? Or have you pretty much given up? Maybe you tell yourself the good ones are all taken, or you find that there is a pattern of you getting into relationships and somehow they're not lasting. Either you get bored, or maybe you get too needy and push those that you're with away. Or maybe you are in a relationship but feel that somehow it's not as exciting anymore. You're more like roommates or strangers, or you go through the same patterns and the same fights over and over again, and you don't find the way out of that maze. Whatever it is, what makes you struggle to find or maintain a healthy, loving relationship, it is not because there is something wrong with you, or that you're jinxed, or that even those partners that you have are wrong. It is more likely that there is something on a subconscious level that has been programmed. And you could call it misprogrammed early in your life. And that's according to my very special guest, Dr. Sellier, who wrote this fascinating book, Safe to Love Again. He will talk with us today about how to heal and grow from past aches and disappointments and making falling in love enjoyable and fulfilling again. Gary, welcome to Empowerment Radio. I'm so glad that you're here. Well, I am too, Friedemann. It's I've been looking forward to this for some time, as you know. It's I'm really happy to be here. Well, which is really funny because, uh, you know, when after 20 years, Danielle and I actually were you know, facing some old patterns and uh, challenges that didn't really always create the most harmonious way of yes. connecting to each other. A friend of ours suggested to work with Gary. And I think it wasn't the first or the second time we met that uh, you said something about, I think I'm on your radio show. And I had no idea. <laughs> so it was kind of funny that uh, we actually stumbled across each other beforehand. And I cannot only recommend your work and your book, but also your work uh, with clients. So uh, I have sent you clients that are very happy. And so uh, anyone who wants to really improve their relationship to love and their loved ones, Gary is the person to go. But let's, let's talk about your uh, journey because it's kind of an interesting job you have, a very desirable job to help people to love and help people to have better loving relationships how did you get to that place well you know it for me it started like way back when i was seven you know growing up in an alcoholic family and i noticed that few of them were happy a lot of them were divorced and even when i was seven i realized that my aunts took up drinking because it was better to get drunk with their their husbands than to be left alone night after night mm. and i asked myself why in the world can't adults love. And so when I went to college, I said, I'm going to make sure I never get a divorce. So I had a degree in, in psychology and religion. I was about ready to graduate and a professor gave me a, a psychological test and called me into his office and gave me the results. And as I was walking out, Friedman, he says, oh, by the way, you have a 90% chance of having I mean, How much? grenades. What percentage? 90. 90%. <laughs> <laughs> grenades going off. Oh, I've got two majors and I haven't licked it, right? 
And so I, I delayed uh, graduation and went a fifth year to get another degree in married to family. I said, Whew, and dodge that bullet. And then 12 years later, the shock of my life was when my first wife says, I want a divorce. I mean, I'd done everything, right? And so I hunkered down and I did about seven, eight, 10 years. I know I was like with one therapist, like seven and a half years. And I really, really worked. I said, okay, if, if degrees, let's just do therapy and let's get it down, right? And then for, I got married thinking, I've got this down. And four years later, we're going through another divorce. And I'm shocked. And it was when I began to realize that my patterns had not changed, that therapy had done me a lot of good, uh, degrees had done me a lot of good, but it hadn't shifted the core way I chose or showed up. Either one would do it. I either pick someone we distant or I'd be distant. And uh, at one point I said, if they haven't mastered the code, then I will. I, I, it just became my life purpose because no one should work that hard. Mm -hmm. and did not have the results as and you know you and i are both kind of results people <laughs> you know. but you're definitely then an expert in failed relationships too which is uh you know something that has been very i guess a very good teaching ground for yourself for you know what you experienced with your relationships and probably you can really relate a lot to what other people had experienced just like you know i needed to have my own anxiety in order to understand people's anxiety Oh, yeah, it's like that old movie, It Takes a Thief. <laughs> the government finds this guy that hacked airlines and say, how do we get this guy, you know. If you haven't been there, and that's part of why I think, when I really started looking at the, res the, the research, right, um, I could tell, and I would just step in, would this have changed those core feelings? And I could say, yep, that would, that would help. Uh, no, no, that's really nice footnote. It's got some nice academic stuff. And I began to just tune into, you know, what was going on in me, what was going on in my clients more. And um, eventually I realized it was these four feelings that everybody has that either you have them or you don't. And if you have them in you know, these four feelings of welcome with joy and worthy and nourished and cherished and protected and empowered with choice, those are the four feelings that tell you. Well, you life. have to make those feelings more slow again. Say them out loud yes. because they're really important. So what are they? I, uh, what we found out is, is what tells a brain that they're, they are secure, really mm -hmm. loved, and loving. And there's something called the strange situation where we can take a child, separate them from their mother for a few minutes, and based on how they, they, they act at the reunion, we can tell whether they're secure or anxious or avoidant at one year old. Mm -hmm. And this love style will track for the rest of their life. Um, now, the secure are those who, you know, they're the people that choose well and <clears throat> they, they are comfortable being committed and being depended on and depending on somebody else. They generally attune and they usually pick pretty good partners. They're the ones that create the lasting love. And are the and secure the age, ones always coming from secure families, like secure models in their, in their parents? Or can you have a secure uh, love style with a dysfunctional upbringing? Usually, it's they've had some somebody secure in their life, or yeah. now yet you can't have something called an earned secure. That's what I've got. <laughs> you know, I used work. to be an avoidant. Yes, you can restore it, but for most people, even now, sometimes somebody got just enough from an aunt or a teacher or maybe one of the parents that the other one didn't affect it so much. So not everybody with a secure love style comes from a perfect family, and nobody has a perfect. We said secure, we didn't say perfect lifestyle. <laughs> Nobody has one of those, right? Um, but they generally have somewhere along the line, if someone's doing better than you would predict, you know they got it from someone. So how do you know that you have a secure lifestyle? So let's say you're, you're just wondering, so what's my, my lifestyle? I mean, it's also based on the attachment theory, right? So what, yes. what is my connection to love? How would they know that they have a secure one? Okay, so the... <clears throat> You could ask the question, so uh, does this feel true or not? You know, uh, I generally uh, feel good depending on somebody in a relationship and being dependent on. I expect to give and to receive. And it feels good being in a partnership 
And, I, and when things go wrong, we tend to make uh, up and uh, we don't hold our grudges for very long. We tend to work things out. That sounds very good, very yes. desirable. Yes, that's pretty much in a nutshell what the secure do. If you can say yes to that, you're probably pretty secure, right? So it's um, secure in the relationship. It's not secure with yourself necessarily. I know, I think the secure do feel secure within themselves, mm. generally speaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, they, <clears throat> they do. <clears throat> they're pretty confident that they're lovable <laughs> and then they're loving right um the anxious and the avoidant not so much <laughs> so just to the because that's really something that often uh, comes uh, up for people can i love someone when i don't find myself lovable can i be in a good relationship when i don't love myself well <clears throat> you 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 can but it's going to have some rocky points you know and i think generally speaking it is true that we can only give the feelings that we've got inside of us. It's going, you know, so if someone doesn't feel lovable, it's go, they, they're going to be anxious. When does that person go, what, want to go away, right? Uh, how do I know that, that they're going to stay a lifetime? And that anxiety can really eat at a relationship, as you well know. The other one, if they don't feel lovable, they can do a preemptive move. They go, you know, I know they're going to go away. I'm really not that stuff. And they do little subtle distancing things that eat away. <laughs> Unlovable, that's what the avoidance do. Uh, so it's important. Uh, us, whatever feelings we have, we tend to give. Uh, what I, the story I tell about this is, you know, one of the key feelings of when you're loved and all children with these secure feelings is they've been welcomed with joy, hmm. right? Uh, uh, good morning, Friedemann. <laughs> it's really good to see you. You know, uh -huh. or with a little one, oh, there's, you know, there's a little freedom in there, you know, when you're a little, right? That's welcome. I was peanut pun, not freedom. <laughs> <laughs> peanut pun. <man>. Peanut pun. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great, man. That's a, that's a term of endearment, right? Yeah. Now, and that feeling is something we have to give. You wake up in the morning, you look, you look at your blood, you're like, good morning, gorgeous, right? Or when they come in at night, you go, gosh, you look beautiful. You, or you look like you have a bad day. Come over and get a hug. That's welcomed with joy. Now, um, you can give, <clears throat> you can tell, give couples skill sets, right, uh, on how to welcome each other with joy, but they don't feel welcomed. It's hard to give it. And the story I tell is uh, years, when I was about tw 25, I, I met my third grade teacher. <laughs> And, mo and she told me this story, you know, I went through first and then my sister went through three years later. My sister took after more after my borderline mother. <clears throat> so, and I'm, and as if you have somebody borderline, they're not real good at welcoming with joy, right? Mm. And me, I, I went everywhere in the opposite direction, <laughs> right? So Mrs. Graham was one of those wonderful ladies that always had guest lecturers and she would have, she would point one person to be the greeter. And the greeter would open the door and welcome the person. So first couple of days of class, she appoints uh, my sister to um, be the greeter. And she goes, well, what do I do? Um, and Mrs. Graham says, well, you go and you open the door and you go, welcome in. <clears throat> the time comes, knock on the door. Mrs. Graham nods at my sister. My sister walks up, opens the door and says, well, Come in. <laughs> uh, See, she, she got the skill set, <laughs> but the feeling was not quite. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. But that's, and, that's, yeah, that's interesting. So were you the greeter too at some point? I, I was the greeter. And she, yeah, according to Mrs. Grant, she goes, I was always like, well, come on in. We've been looking for you. And she goes, that's when I realized that your sister was not going to be a replay. <laughs> <laughs> but w when couples come in, and sometimes if you teach them a skill set, and you first haven't restored the right to feel welcomed with joy and to welcome others, or a right to feel worthy and nourished, and to and to give that feeling if they don't have the reference feeling deep within them they will not give it they'll do the skill set you know they'll follow the little handout even if you give them a hint 
and somehow if they don't feel worthy they will somehow do it with just enough criticism <laughs> yeah <laughs> to make you know and so it's important that these feelings be in our in our body and our and right deep in our soul right so that we can give them because welcome people make people feel welcome worthy people make people feel worthy and they won't choose people that make them feel unworthy that's because these are reference feelings the feelings are our reference feelings, it's like a gps that point us towards the true north or getting off in the woods if we don't have these four feelings, you remember back when GPS wasn't all as good as it was these days and they'd take you down a road that was, <laughs> you know, under construction or something, or would lead you through the backwoods and you'd never get to your destination. That's what it's like when we don't have these four feelings to guide us. Now, after the break, we're going to talk more about those feelings because I want to definitely learn more about this GPS and we will also talk about, again, these love styles and how people know that they're either avoiders or have an anxious love style. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, Dr. Friedman here. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. If you're interested in learning more about fear and anxiety, here you'll find guided meditations, webinars, and interviews with some of the most renowned experts in the field of empowerment. Delve into the over 230 videos and more to come every week.